Hello, I'm Victoria Fritz. The stock markets in Europe have ended the trading session, so let's check in with where they have finished the day. Well, as you can see, investors really shying away from the stock markets today, really looking to take refuge in safer assets such as German bonds. And that's really because there are concerns that the violence in Iraq could escalate even further. In the currency markets, though, the pound was also really under pressure today for a second day because investors are cutting back on some of their more bullish bets when it comes to the pound because the Bank of England governor is doing his best to cool expectations of an interest rate hike later on this year. In London, the high street lender TSB had a bit of a rocky start today because this was the day that retail investors got their teeth into the bank for the first time. TSB managed to stay just above its offer price of £2.60, a feat not matched by many of the other recently listed companies. Uh, I'll show you this one here, Carphone Warehouse. In the last half an hour, the European Commission has unconditionally approved a £3.8 billion merger between these guys, Carphone Warehouse and Dixon's Retail. And here are some very striking numbers for you. The merger will create a group with a turnover of about £12 billion. There will be 2,900 stores and 45,000 employees. So one to look at. And this is Shire. This is a takeover target. It's one of the few stocks that actually made some gains today. It's a pharmaceutical giant and it's continuing a very spirited defense against an American firm, Abvi. We heard today that a judge in America has upheld Shire's claim, claim when it comes to its patents and its best-selling drug for ADHD. That's uh, the attention deficit disorder. They were saying that they were infringed by generic drug-making rivals. So let's speak now to Kerry Craig. He's the global market strategist at JP Morgan Asset Management. Thanks very much for joining us. Good afternoon. Kerry, let's start with Shire. We heard, didn't we, today from Abvi uh, in an investor call that they're not giving up just yet, are they? No, there's uh, a lot of appetite for M&A activity in the market at present. Uh, it's an encouraging sign that uh, CEOs and CIOs are looking to use up a lot of the cash that these companies have, particularly American companies who want to try and diversify their companies in Europe and diversify their tax base. Uh, I would caution, though, that when looking at uh, M&A activity, it's important that it's happening for the right reasons, uh, and that's why we treat all these on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, we were talking just a little bit earlier about um, sterling, the pound versus the euro and against the dollar. We've got the FTSE up on the board, down 0.8%. There is a little bit of a controversy, isn't there, about when we might see interest rate hikes. First, the Chancellor suggests, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Governor of the Bank of England suggested that it might be sooner than expected, so people took that to mean the, begin the end of this year. Now, he's saying that it could be further out into next year. It's throwing the markets into a little bit of disarray, but you yourself are quite bullish on the UK recovery story, aren't you? Yeah, we like what's happening in the UK. Uh, the problem with the, the Bank of England and its forward guidance policy that it's adopted is it's being very inconsistent in the message that Mr Carney is portraying to the markets. Uh, their forecast said they were going to look for rate rises potentially in the middle of next year. Then you have statements that say it might happen earlier this year. And then since then you've had Mr Carney trying to backtrack on that statement. So it just highlights the problem with forward guidance, the fact that it's so dependent on the data that's coming out. And we think that will what is going to play out over the rest of the year. It really depends on the data, particularly wage data and how much that strengthens will really dictate when the Bank of England actually does start to rise interest rates. I think for investors and for markets, the important fact is that interest rates will go up. Uh, there's no denying that and the timing isn't so important. The fact that they need to prepare for the interest rates rising is probably more important. Now, Kerry, we were looking at markets across Europe. They haven't done so well today. Um, we've also seen, actually, the price of Brent crude has fallen a little bit today. It's down at $113.5 a barrel at the moment. It really goes to show that geopolitical tensions can really affect the markets, can't they? Yeah, geopolitical risk is something that uh, every investor in every market will have to prepare for. Uh, however, what we've seen in Iraq uh, isn't as bad as it could be. It is definitely a potential hotspot. So far, it hasn't affected the oil price in the way that may be expected because the fighting hasn't really incurred on exports of oil production at the moment. You've also seen the likes of Libya starting to come back online, Saudi Arabia saying that they will increase their production, perhaps offset any fall, and the US also talking about exporting oil. So that's probably why the oil price hasn't reacted in the way it has. Some of the sell-off we've seen in European markets this week hasn't all been down to what's happening in Iraq. 
Iraq. We had some softer data come out of the Eurozone this week, and perhaps investors are just taking the opportunity to take a little bit of profit uh, in what has otherwise been a very good equity market in Europe. For us, there's still very many reasons to be in favour of risk assets. Monetary policy is still very loose, money's very cheap, inflation is quite low, and the global economy is actually generally getting better, not worse. So all good reasons to stay and overweight towards risk assets for us. Sounds good. Thanks very much, Kerry. Now, remember, you can always get a full roundup of all the other business stories on the website, including the news that we were talking about just earlier, that Wonga has been using fake lawyers to chase debt. The address appearing just behind me, bbc.co.uk forward slash business. That's it from me. I'll be back in about an hour's time. I'll see you then.